Hi, this is Andrew from DPS, and today I'm going to talk to you about SCADA system price factors. These are the things that affect what you're going to pay when you're evaluating and ultimately choosing a SCADA system for your organization. So what are those factors? Well, we'll go through a couple of them now. You have input and output counts. This is how many different alarm conditions or sensor values, how many things can come into your small gateway devices, which have a few different forms, and I'll get into that. And then how many outputs you have, things like control relay outputs. These you'd want to count up because the more hardware cost is involved here with all these inputs and outputs, that's going to be a factor when it comes to how much you're going to be paying. You also have protocol support, which is what kind of protocols can I take into our, my gateway devices? And usually the most important one, what protocol am I going to send northbound to my HMI, my central master station? So that will be a factor because certain protocols are open and tend to be less expensive. Others, if they're specific to a manufacturer or a little more rare, you might pay more for that. You also have intelligence built into these gateways. So can they make local decisions? Can you program in some logic so they can execute commands when they need to? And obviously more advanced capabilities are gonna come with a higher price. And finally, there's customization because so much in SCADA relies on adapting the off-the-shelf solutions to your specific environment. So if you have a ability to customize your system so that you can request something from the manufacturer and they might make a change, they have engineers on staff to do this, Obviously, this is a higher level of service. It's going to give you a better system overall, but there is a price to be paid for it. So it is a price factor. Now, it's very important right now that we talk about PLCs and RTUs. If you see my other videos or read some of my articles, you'll know that this is a big decision point. And there's a reason why we have PLCs and RTUs for different kinds of SCADA applications. So the key factor when you talk about these two things is whether or not you need PLCs where you're going to have many, many small PLC, they're programmable logic controller devices in your operation that you must program yourself or have a consultant program for you, or whether or not you're going to have RTUs with built-in intelligence that you're just configuring. You're just setting up things maybe in a web interface. You're just setting them up and the system is going to work for you. You don't need a dedicated programmer to write code. But that's not to say that PLCs don't have their use. You're going to use PLCs very commonly in manufacturing, food production, water, wastewater. These are all environments where you have a large array of things going on that you need to track, but it's not really spread out across a large area. You might just have a factory floor or you might have a small outdoor water processing plant. It's just not spread out over miles and miles. That's where PLCs are gonna come in. And you'll find that PLCs are actually quite cheap because you're just paying for hardware, right? If they don't come with programming, it's just a hardware device, it's kind of a commodity. You'll see some that are $100, maybe less. Higher capacity models might be a few hundred, but all of the cost with PLCs comes in the form of that programming. So do consider that total cost of ownership because that might drag your cost to $1,000 or more. And ultimately that's going to vary based on the quantity. It's a little ironic, but it makes sense when you, when you stop and think about it. If you have many, many PLCs, they might all be programmed the same, meaning that code only needs to be written once. So the cost per PLC may actually drop even as your total project price may go up. So there's a little bit of interesting math that goes on there. The other type of SCADA that we do see a lot, and this is actually more where DPS specializes, is when you talk about RTUs. And these are remote telemetry units or remote terminal units. As I talked about, you don't program these. These will include features that you can configure to your liking, maybe set up basic logic, whether it's ladder logic or some kind of similar system for if then. You do not need to write program code yourself, which is a huge help. RTUs, because they tend to be larger, have higher input and output counts, and do include that built-in software that you just configure, they will tend to be a bit higher price. You're going to find bare bones RTUs out there that are maybe two or $300. But I just caution you that those are commonly manufactured overseas. They almost certainly don't include free tech support because how could they for that amount of money that you're paying? And the quality may not be there. I mean, these are going to meet the dictionary definition of an RTU, but they just may be lacking when you look at your total cost of ownership later. As we move up the price ladder, you can find full service USA manufactured RTUs starting at about $700, $800, that kind of a range. And at this point, now you do get that tech support. So if you need some help, you can get it. You're gonna get some proven designs. But at this lower price level, we're talking about something that's probably a very small capacity. This is just a entry level size or with probably entry level features. And as you move up the scale from here, you might see 2,000, 3,000, even $5,000 or more for an RTU. And as you get up to those ranges, and sticker shock is very common, 
just remember, you have an important operation here that you're monitoring, and that's why you're even researching a SCADA system. So don't confuse price versus total cost of ownership, which includes things like, oh, we have to buy tech support, or we have to hire an outside expert. Those are all truly part of that purchase price you're gonna be paying in the first year or two of owning this thing. You gotta total all that up, because that's just out-of-pocket cost. But ultimately, go beyond that and think about the ROI, that return on investment. What are you getting for the amount that you're spending? Because there is so much benefit to be had with good SCADA. You're gonna be a more efficient operation. You're gonna have fewer big expensive mishaps that are going on. Ultimately, it's gonna save you money. And the payoff period might be quite short, sometimes a matter of months or even a few years. It's not gonna take forever usually to get that return on investment. And you wanna think about that because sometimes the more expensive device is actually one that's going to pay off pretty quickly for you. Finally, HMIs, SCADA HMI. This is the central master station where all the data comes together. What's this gonna cost you? Again, it varies a lot based on your input output requirements. How much intelligence? Does it have good displays? Do you have touch screens around that display this information when you have a manufacturing type environment? What does that look like? But there's also a massive range of possible prices for SCADA HMIs. You have everything from free software, literal freeware, that you can download and install. And this is fine to play with, fine if you're a hobbyist. But as I talked about in the ROI section, you need to have some care for the quality of your, your operation. If you've got a really important operation, you need to protect it. And that's where you might find that the right choice could be some HMI software or a hardware software appliance that could be $60,000, $80,000, or even $100,000 or more. It just really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So as you look at SCADA system prices, just in summation here, really focus on that return on investment. What is the value you're getting? This isn't just spending. This is an investment that should ultimately save you money. So ask hard questions of your potential vendors. Ask if they've done this kind of work before. Definitely ask whether or not we're going down a PLC or an RQ direction. Be sure you make the right choice there. And if you do this, if you make these decisions right, you're going to end up in the right purchase and you'll ultimately end up with something that's going to benefit your organization. So I hope that helped you understand a bit about what you can expect to pay for a SCADA system. If this video helped you, please click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos like this one. Until next time, this is Andrew wishing you excellent reliability.